Hello, my name is Stephen, and in this video I'm going to take you through the spray coating method for tablet coating using Altair Edem. Coating is common in many industries, from pharmaceutical mixers, it's important to get a uniform coating with the active ingredient. With food processing and agriculture, we have similar goals where the uniform distribution of coating is very important. And EDAM can help you achieve this goal. We're talking about the interparticle spray coating method in this case, which is a physics model. It gives us one value of coating per tablet, which is unlike the intra tablet coating method, which is a post processing method and gives you a value across a tablet as well as one value to measure per tablet for a distribution. The inter method is a particle contact method where we have small spray particles that transfer mass to larger tablet type particles. This requires us to re-simulate if we want to change the spray location, but um, the data saved doesn't have any influence on the results. It's also available in any different particle type. I've already run my simulation to a steady state. And I'm going to add in the spray coating capabilities. To start off, I'm going to add in a new bulk material and call this spray material. Let's add in a new shape, add shape from library, single sphere in this case. The shape of the spray is not important, although the size of the spray is. So let's give it a name, let's spray or spray particle, and set a, a size. This should be approximate to the, the spray droplet size. We don't want to have too many particles in the simulation, but we do want it to be representative of the spray droplet. So 0 0.5 millimeters in this instance is good. Maybe slightly smaller would be better, but for the purposes of this video, it's easier to visualize the slightly larger particles. Next set the material properties. We will do auto calculation. And this is useful because if we come back and change our size uh, or change the material density, the properties will be automatically calculated again. Next step is to set the preference ratio density first. Um, I'll set this to be the same as water. And for the shear modulus, the stiffness of the material, as we're not calculating any forces in this instance, we're not really interested in calculating any forces because what is going to happen is that when our spray particle is going to be in contact with our tablet material, all the spray volume will be transferred to the tablet and then we'll remove our spray particle from the simulation. So we can set quite a low value for shear modulus in this instance. We want to do this so it doesn't influence our simulation time step. We can then set some default interactions. As um, again, we're not really influencing the material behavior in terms of the flow. Now we have our spray particle set up. We need to identify an area in which the material is going to be spraying from, it's spraying down onto our particles. To do this, we'll go to the geometries and add in a new geometry polygon. So right click, add geometries, polygon, creates quite a large rectangle as default. I'm going to turn it into a, an area, spherical area of 20 sides, and give it a, a size appropriate for the, the spray zone. So 10 millimeters is appropriate here. Set it 10 to representative, and we can see it just placed there right in the center of the, the model. So we need to go to transform and change the position of this. Let's set the X and Z position to be 65 millimeters. And we want the spray to be coming down at an angle in this instance, let's put it at 45 degrees. Now this is the area where the spray will be entering the simulation. Let's set the 
the name to be spray area and also um, for the factory we want this to be a virtual factory so let's change the type from physical to virtual then add factory and set it to create an unlimited amount of material which is a continuous spray we'll keep the default number of particles per second as 5000 and we don't need to change any of the other inputs just to confirm the material is set as a spray material we don't want it to be creating any of the other types so it's a spray particle type then we need to set the velocity we could leave this as a fixed velocity but we would need to set the x and the z components of this if we add it as a fixed velocity it will just create particles directly on the plane that we defined and give them a direct velocity in our identified direction there are different types we can choose but the spray option is best in this instance it creates a cone fan type spray configure this and we want to set the mean velocity leaves at one meter per second in this instance and the direction it wants to be negative x and negative z to create the same 45 degrees that the, the plane is angled at the cone type spray for the factory is set at 60 degrees by default but that's quite large so let's go to 20 for our material the next step now we have the material factory set up is to define the physics so let's close these tabs and go to the physics option under particle to particle we can go to edit contact chain and choose spray or spray coating this, is, this helps us define what happens when two spray particles contact each other and also what happens when a spray particle contacts a tablet particle if we go to configure we can choose an active spray material this defines uh, the spray type the physics model will then be able to identify this ignore any spray spray interactions and for the spray material interaction with the tablets or any other particle type in the simulation this will mean that on contact the whole spray volume will be transferred to the tablet particles we also need to change the particle geometry and choose to configure this as well so edit contact chain add spray coating if we choose an active spray again this will ignore any active spray interactions with equipment material as again we just want to have our spray interacting with our tablets and ignore all other contacts there's also a third option to choose from which is under the particle body force we can change to this and under edit contact chain choose the spray options so spray coating update in this case if we choose spray coating update the particle sizes will be changed we have the option of not including this in which case we just record the amount of spray per particle if the change in volume has an influence on the material flow profiles then it's necessary to add in the particle body force however if the volume change is extremely small per particle then all we're doing is adding an extra calculation overhead to our simulation which is unnecessary we can record the amount of material transferred without actually changing our particle sizes and that's it there's no options to set in the particle body force other than choosing the model or not choosing the model so we can go to the the simulator under the simulator I can see my time step here is 50% it was originally 20% when I'd run the simulation so I could reduce it down but we can maybe go back to our spray material and just reduce the shear modulus slightly 
because we're not resolving any of the forces, just transferring volume, all we need to do is we, we can have this lower lower stiffness of the particles and just uh, make sure our time step is appropriate for the tablet material. So I'll start our simulation and we should be able to see the particles coming out of the spray nozzle that we've defined. This follows the trajectory that we've set it's in a spray pattern and we can see the material impacting on the material bed. Simulation's running and I'll skip the video forwards to the final completed time of six seconds. So here we are, the material, the simulation is completed and we can look at the EDEM analyst. We've done many different measures to look at for our particles and for our equipment. Looking at the velocity and the velocity profiles allows us to investigate the material flow profiles, which is also useful for tablet coating and associated coating processes. However, in this instance, really, we want to look at the volume and the volume added of the spray specifically. So let's go to our particles first and set this up. First, let's go to our spray particle, identify these differently, set them as a uniform color, a dark blue probably is appropriate in this instance. Then let's select our tablets. We have three different tablet types as this helps with the mixing analysis if you have multiple types, but we'll just choose them all and do the analysis of them all together in this instance. So let's choose volume and auto-update the minimum and maximum volume. So we can see that at this time of six seconds there's a minimum color which I'll set as a, um, a blue again in this instance, a mid color of green and a max of red um, which we can see is a particle inside the, the bed there. This is just for the tablets, we can ignore the, the volume of the spray itself. So let's switch the simulation back to time of zero the start. We can see that all the particles are the same size. As the spray comes in, it's contacting the, the tablets, transferring the volume and increasing our, our particle, our tablet volume. In this instance, my spray particles are relatively large. A smaller spray droplet size would increase the tablet size slightly less. Had I not included the particle body force, we would just see a measure which is called volume added. The volume added is the same as the, the increase in the, the size of the, the material volume although it doesn't actually change. So we could look at the change in volume or the volume added measure. If we don't include the particle body force, it's only the volume added measure, which we can do for the analysis. In this simulation, we can see that some of our particles have not been in the spray zone and have no volume added, and others have got multiple contacts from the spray zone. So from here we could do further analysis, looking at the uniform material coating in our mixer in order to get a, a uniform analysis. The material here clearly doesn't have a lot of axial directional transport, at least not with the small amount of time they've looked at. So we don't necessarily have a very good distribution in this case. Further changes, such as increasing the run times, changing the spray locations, changing the geometry type, changing the, the baffle positions would all help improve this coating and coating uniformity, which you could then do as an analysis starting from this initial design. Thank you for listening. I hope this spray coating video is useful for your tablet coating analysis work.